All right, so this is a very important session because the vast majority of what you're going to do intraday in terms of tactics is going to depend on these principles that you're about to learn. Like we said, we focus a lot on trend days because of their powerful profit potential and the fact that you can really get hurt and lose a lot if you are trying to trade against them. But the reality is they happen a vast minority of the time and the other 90% or so of the time you're going to be wanting to fade the support and resistance zones that you've drawn up in your trade plan. Now the real question is though how do you know which ones to fade and at what time? Right? It can't be as simple as you just draw them and you just place an order to fade every single one. That would be too easy, obviously, and the mark is more complex than that. So given that, what we've done is to distill everything we know and do into nine major principles that, if followed, will act as guidelines to give you effective intraday tactics. Okay? So there are nine principles, and let's get started with them. Principle number one. Some support resistance zones are automatic fade zones, unless it's a trend day, okay? So the first principle is telling you that some support and resistance zones are so important, and we'll get into the other principles that tell you which ones are more important, but you'll find that some are so important that you're automatically going to fade them. And again, fade means you sell at resistance or you buy at support, okay? This principle is obviously going to uh, influence the execution because if they're automatic fade zones, you're pretty much just going to have your order sitting there at them waiting to be filled. Okay? Now, I hope you've understood from everything we've taught so far in this whole training that we're always thinking in probabilities and there's no certainties. So even though we're saying some are automatic fade zones, it doesn't mean they're always going to work. It just means that they're so important and they work the vast majority of the times that it just makes sense no matter what the intraday character, you know, unless it's a pure trend day against coming into the zone, you're just going to want to trade there. Okay? So we're going to see examples of these in the following session, but for now I'm just going to detail them one after the other. All right? So that's principle number one. Principle number two. Most support or resistance zones should only be faded if the bias is not strong against them and we're also seeing some sort of either exhaustion or divergence setup. So what this means is that if you haven't identified a zone as an automatic fade zone, right, and the majority won't be, then you should not fade them. You should not trade there if the bias is strong against it, okay? And by now you should know how to de determine the bias of the day based on, you know, the bigger picture all the way down in terms of context. If you're trading the index futures, you also use internals. And so the, if the bias is against them and they're not an automatic fade zone, you just want to let it go and not try to fade the move there. Now here we're saying strong bias, right? If you're moving, for example, up towards a resistance zone, obviously the bias is going to be bullish. Right? But just as long as it's not overwhelmingly bullish in terms of the bigger context and everything down to even the market internals, then you can fade them if you see some sort of setup there, some sort of exhaustion or a divergence setup. And we're going to get deep into those uh, when we get into the execution part. We'll, we'll detail every single type of setup we have. But this is a very important principle to observe and respect. Some traders think that all you have to do is just highlight some support resistance zones and always trade there. That's not true. You got to be able to read the market and decide if the given context and whatever you're seeing in terms of setups warrant a trade at that support or resistance zone. Okay? Of course, unless it's an automatic zone like we said before. Now, principle number three. The first test of a support and resistance zone will offer you the best odds of a reaction. Okay, this is a very important principle. And always keep in mind this idea of a first test. And what this means is that simply you're going to get the best trades 
on the first move towards a certain support resistance zone. Let's say you have support below and the market's coming down. The first time it hits that zone is going to give you the best odds of a reaction. If it comes down again, it doesn't mean it's going to break. You could get a good trade there again, depending on what you're seeing in the market, other types of setups. But just know that the odds are highest on the first test. Subsequent tests will have lower and lower odds of working out for you as a trade. Okay. Principle number four. The larger the time frame of a support and resistance zone, the higher the odds of it holding on an intraday test. Now, we've discussed this many times before, so you should already know this, but now it's more structured into a specific principle. And we've seen this, you know, in the example where we were going through the six step process, we said over and over and over, the bottom of the balance area that we were seeing is important because that was a major support or resistance zones from a larger time frame, right? And so once you hit that intraday, the odds of it holding are quite high because it's more important than from a bigger picture, okay? Now, principle number five. The more confluence we have in a support or resistance zone, the higher the odds of it holding on an intraday test. And again, we've discussed this over and over, but now we formalize it, and this shows that the more key reference areas we see lining up in the same zone, the odds of it holding on an intraday test, especially on the first test, okay? Principle number six, the more important the previous move that started from a support and resistance zone, the higher the odds of it holding on intraday test. What does this mean? You'll understand it more once we show an example in the next session, but we know that a lot of times what creates support and resistance is some important tail forming or some launching point of directional conviction or something like that that creates a new move. And then when you go to test it later, it acts as support and resistance. Well, what this is saying is that the more important that the previous move was, the bigger, the more importance it has contextually, the higher the odds of the support and resistance zones that it formed holding, okay? And we'll see this in the example, but if, for instance, you had a major gap that caused a move out of a major balance area, when you're coming back to test that place where the gap was beginning, the odds of it holding are higher, the more important that breakout move was that it caused, and the bigger the balance that it came out of, okay? because that's going to bring more time frames, more market participants into play that were stuck on the wrong side and so forth. All right. Principle number seven, the more the larger time frames are aligned with a specific support or resistance zone, the higher the odds of it holding on an intraday test. Okay. And this is a concept we've been talking about since we started the foundation training to always be aligned with the bigger picture bias and trend. So what this is basically saying is that if the bigger picture is bullish, you have a you have a larger time frame uptrend and and the intermediate term is looking good too. And now on an intraday basis we're coming down to test support, while the odds of that support holding are higher because the larger time frames are aligned with it. And the more time frames are aligned with it, the higher the odds of it holding. Okay. Now, principle number eight how the price approaches a support or resistance zone influences the odds of that zone holding or breaking. Okay, so it's not just about the zone itself, like in the previous principles, but how the price approaches and reaches that zone is going to influence whether that zone holds or breaks. And this is very important to note. And we'll see this in some examples, but just to give you some clarity now, what this is saying is that if price had been moving very, very strongly, coming towards a zone had been extended, and this zone is important, there's more likely to be a reaction on the first test than if price had been approaching it in a more structured manner without being overextended. Now, this is a very counterintuitive principle. Most traders have been taught and just have a natural feeling 
that you don't want to see a very sharp down move into a support zone. It's too scary to buy there. Well, most of the time the opposite is true. If you've had a strong down move, for instance, and it's already extended and it's already gone down quite a bit and now you're hitting a support zone, especially if it's a decently important one, that's the perfect time to buy. Because it approached it already extended, already hitting an extreme, and it's likely now to be exhausted as it hits the support zone. Whereas if it had been coming towards that zone, then before it hit the zone, it had a nice long balance, and now it's breaking out of the balance to the downside towards that zone. Well, now the odds are actually less likely that the zone will hold because it's the price is no longer temporarily exhausted. It had its resting point, and now it's pushing off in an initiative manner and creating a new thrust. So you see the difference there. Now, this is a subtle one that you're going to have to balance with principle number two, which told you that for most zones, you don't want the bias to be strongly against it. Okay. And obviously, if you're having a very sharp, for instance, down move towards support, the bias will be against it. But here's where over time and experience, you're going to understand and using these principles that sometimes you're going to get overextension in price and a temporary exhaustion. And those are good points to fade the move at a support resistance zone. Okay. So, you know, sometimes you'll see that some of these principles will slightly contradict with another one, but it's all in context. And we're going to try to explain how to look at that and how to gain experience and judging that context. Okay. And finally, principle number nine, and that's that the more factors that line up to increase the odds of a support resistance zone holding, which is exactly what we've been talking about in the previous principles, those factors that increase the odds. So the more of those that line up, the greater the profit potential from that zone. All right. So before all we've been talking about is entries. Now this principle is telling you about exits. Okay, odds tell you about entries, like the odds of this holding is good, so you should enter there. But what this is also telling you is that the more of those other things line up, the greater the profit potential. Okay, and this is going to affect how you execute your exits too. If you have greater profit potential from a certain zone, we're going to see that you're going to probably want to shoot for a bigger profit exit. If not a lot of factors lined up, then you're probably just going to want to take a predictable small reaction. And we'll see that later. But for now, these are the nine principles. And I hope you've noticed, and actually I want you to think about right now, that first principle that talked about the fact that some zones are automatic fade zones. So what I want to ask you to think about now is what would make a zone an automatic fade zone. If you want, pause the video, think about that a bit. Based on all this, what do you think would make a zone an automatic fade zone? So I hope you've thought about it. Again, that's how you'll learn by thinking about these things for yourself and try to figure things out on your own because you know, in the market, you're going to have to figure a lot more stuff on your own. But the basic answer is that the more factors that line up, like we had discussed before, the more of an automatic zone it also becomes. Just kind of like this principle is talking about profit potential. It also talks about what makes a zone an automatic fade zone. So for instance, if all the principles are met, like it's a larger time frame support and resistance zone, there's confluence there with other zones. A quite important move had previously launched from that zone. The larger time frame biases are aligned with the direction of your trade. If it's a resistance zone, the larger time frames are down. If that's a support zone, the larger time frames are up. Well, if those are all combined, that's definitely an automatic fade zone. <laughs> okay. You just want to have your order there. And all things being equal in the context, that's probably going to be a pretty good profit potential from that zone. Okay. Now, not all of those things have to line up for a zone to be an automatic fade zone. This is going to take some experience and it's going to have to do with the context. It'll be a judgment call. You know, I, again, I know traders hate uncertainty and 
you're probably tired of hearing that this is, takes experience or a judgment call, but that's the reality of it. If it was easy as me giving you exact rules, then you know anyone could do this, and again, there would be no profit left because everyone would just share a small piece of the pie. Whereas because it takes dedication, work, and experience into building up these skills, only a few will actually do what it takes to do it, and they'll get bigger pieces of the pie. So the question is, are you going to be one of those people that puts in the time, effort, and dedication to do it? I certainly hope so. And having said that, in the next session, we're going to get into some specific examples that highlight these principles in action and give you a deeper understanding of them so you can start putting them to use in your own trading.